What is going on, guys? Welcome back. Commentary for you. Chantal went live, and my goodness. I will say, I'm glad that she was honest. She goes through the normal lows. She talks about her eyeball and how apparently it's not bulging out anymore. That that doesn't last. She said she can't be on long. It's so late. It's 1.30 in the morning. But in the beginning, you can go listen. She said she feels really good. She goes over the fact she isn't going back to Canada. I have no idea why people continue to ask her if she's going back to Canada in these chats. I mean, these are her beezers. She says right now the plan is to just talk. She put up all the groceries. She's going to start to cook. And then she tells us the truth, which, listen, when she tells us the truth, I'm going to sit here and say, good job, Chantal. Great job at telling us the truth. You're throwing away food and you're wasting it. Because that's the type of person you are. She believes that this is some type of flex, that the back of the fridge is, quote, really cold. And you can tell that she says this in a way of, you know, we have really high quality stuff. It's The refrigerator is so good it actually froze the food. No, Chantal. What that's telling you is you've overstocked the refrigerator. But it's nice to admit that you're sitting here and telling us what we've all said for the longest time and you've declined to admit to. You're wasting food. You're throwing away food. Because you want takeout instead. And you continue to buy large amounts of bulk vegetables, fruits, and all of it ends up in the trash for the most part. It's despicable. It proves that you don't care. You could give these foods away, but you choose not to. Because you're greedy and you're wasteful. And you're sitting there after admitting that you threw healthy foods away because you let them rot... And talking about these sweet and low cookies you plan on pounding down. And how you don't feel bad about eating them. Of course you don't feel bad about eating them. You want them. What you should feel bad about is wasting food, but you don't. She said she's hyper. She was so busy today. And we'll get into it later, but you can safely assume busy meant the treadmill for 20 minutes, putting up groceries, and vlogging. The chat, as I've said the past couple live streams, pretty much over it. They want her to go do things. They're tired of seeing this same repetitive sit seal, eat. They tell her to go out for a drive. She said she can't drive at night. And now all of a sudden she's tired. She literally goes from I'm hyper, I feel good, to I'm tired. In 10 minutes, her eye starts to bulge the more she talks. In less than 15 minutes in, she's going over food. What she's going to make, how she can make it. Everything needs a cream sauce. And then we start to get into this NBC contacted her. You know, here's what I find the most comical about this. Some of the smaller channels are claiming they've been contacted. And not many of the larger channels are claiming they've been contacted. So the reality is, anyone that wants to create this pro-foodie narrative, where somebody might feel sympathetic towards her, the response is going to be Cuba Rage. And any reporter, any investigator, sees that, and the liability of Chantal is going to be astronomical. If you want to build this case, not to deviate much, but if you want to build this case for Amber Lynn and how, oh my God, the internet treats her so poorly, two words, the thumbnails. Anyone critically thinking is going to look at her thumbnails and say, oh, 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 wait a second. This person invites this. This person mocks themselves. And that's all it takes is someone that critically thinks. You want to make a case that either one of these people are being, I guess, shamed? Uh, you're going to be hard-pressed to truly find it. What, what you're going to find is that people made channels in Chantal and Amber claiming to promote getting their life back in order and then did anything but that. And, and Chantal wants to sit there and tell us tonight that she was asked about, quote, the haters. And that this was, quote, a while ago. So the timelines in the story don't even align. Do we really think that a reporter came to her and said, we'd like to talk to you about your haters? I, I just don't think so. And she says that she didn't tell anyone about this before because she didn't think it was legit. But now all of a sudden, it's a well-known journalist. A and again, I'll just say it. I think it's odd. FFG, Yaba, neither one included. It, or if they are, they haven't said anything. But personally, I feel like they would say something if they'd been contacted. And listen, NBC, I would love this. The sooner the better. Because most people who see Amber and Chantel are going to use common sense. They are going to find the larger channels I just spoke about. And you can label these, quote, hate channels all you want. But 
just like I mentioned. Soon as some see Cuba rage, soon as some see Amber Lynn losing multiple cats, as soon as people see Chantal's willing neglect the BBJ, the Omega incident, the list goes on and on. The case is going to be pretty cut and dry. And look, we've got the Slaytons. We can see the blueprint that if you want to put in the hard work, if you want to go be successful, you're going to get accolades. You're going to be praised. Amber and Chantal want that sympathy of look at what's happening, feel sorry for me. They never want to put the hard work in to actually reclaim their life. Chantal literally sat there tonight and said she's going to be famous. She goes over ignoring YouTube managers and how, quote, they don't work. She says that, you know, they might be able to help you make money, but they don't help reporting hate channels. And this could not tie any better into this whole NBC situation. Chantal, it's not that they don't want to help you. It's that your opinion isn't validated by them. Okay, again, you, Chantal, you are the one... In, in some cases, some of the other channels that are promoting this narrative, they are the ones with terms of service violations. Not, not me. I don't want to speak for Frenchie. I don't believe she has one. I don't know. I do believe maybe Yaba had maybe a week off, but I don't know what that was for. And Chantal sits there and claims, oh, well, the reason they're not helpful is high turnover rate. She's had more than one manager. Uh, Chantal, did you ever think that maybe those managers voluntarily left you because you weren't responsive to what they were asking? You weren't doing what they were telling you? You weren't trying? Does, does that maybe fall into any other facet of your life when it comes to, I don't know, medical professionals? Eventually, the, the chat asked her, is she just happy? And she said she is, but she's not happy all the time. She was glad to get back on the treadmill. She wants Sala to bring out Howie. She assumes that Salah fell asleep. Then he brings in the whole cage, and she wants to give Howie bread. She literally goes from petting the hamster, to digging in her eye, to petting Julia, to digging in her face. And somehow, 40 minutes of this exhausts her. She then goes over the YouTube channels that she watches. She neglects to talk about Yaba, who she watched all morning, followed by posting, while Yaba was live on her community page, only to delete it minutes later, and then post she was going to ignore the channel that she wasn't supposed to be watching, and then delete the post that said she was going to ignore that channel. She also plans more of these, quote, a day in the life, which she also called what I ate today. They ask her, you know, what is a day in your life, Chantal? What would that even be? And she says, well, for example, today she did laundry, and she can talk now about how good Tide smells. And she cleared off her shelves. She did some, quote, personal life things that she can't mention. And she put away the groceries. And she says the groceries can be an all-day event. Because it's like Tetris. And we just don't understand. We also know this has been a process for her. That a lot of times putting up the food doesn't even include putting up all the food. Sometimes it just stays out right in front of her. And then she goes to say, well, I also sealed a bit today, but sealing is healthier. It's better for me than sitting down because it's a benefit to my circulation. She, she wants to go back into these cookies and say, you know, these cookies, they're good. They're, they're perfect. They're healthy for her. She wants Salah to try the bean boozled beans. Salah believes that despite the names, they could actually be made with things like earwax and barf. An hour in, she is screaming at Julia, who is still not wearing a cone. She holds up one of the candles and says, If you're craving it, you can't eat it. I suppose this meant, you know, if you have a craving for something, just buy the candle of that smell. Chantal, that's only going to make the craving worse. And the fact that you're craving gingerbread when you don't even know what it's made of, and then essentially say, well, the candle caused this, I would probably get any candle that smells like food out of the home. She then talks about watching Christmas movies, and the chat understandably corrects her and says, listen, as a revert, you should not be celebrating. And she says, well, she's not celebrating. She, she can watch Christmas movies and not be religious. 
She watched them before and she wasn't religious. Chantal, it's not the point. It, it literally everything that you are told you should not be doing, you find a way to justify. You can't have cookies. What about these sweet and low ones? You can't watch Christmas movies or celebrate Christmas. Well, uh, what about if I watch it and say it's for non-religious purposes? You're not supposed to celebrate Halloween. Oh, but I'm not celebrating Halloween. I'm just eating candy that I would normally eat in an orange hat. I I'm just putting on makeup to eat donuts. You know, Chantal, again... You are doing things through a religion that most people would be highly uncomfortable with, even if they weren't religious. She goes over her favorite foods. She sings song to Julia. The chat tells her, listen, this is getting boring. Her response by dancing, giving Julia treats. And then, of course, she needs to log off. She has to be with Salah. Not another moment apart. He wants to watch a movie. It's three in the morning. And of course... She promises Crazy Frog tomorrow. And I wonder, do they have do they have the rights to play Crazy Frog? Since, you know, we were in this big kick about legalities and all these things. I know other channels have mentioned it. I, I don't believe they they have the rights to Crazy Frog. Interesting concept. Interesting thing to think about. Especially if you're if you're coming online and promoting it and then making money with it. Well, I you know, I don't know. What do I what do I know? Everyone's an idiot but Chantal and Sala and some other reaction channels. Other than that, listen, I'm going to leave you guys with the top comments from the last video. I will offer to you that the Amberlin updates, at least the next couple, are going to be moved to members only if you care to watch them. And you know, unlike those sweet and low cookies, I'll be back as soon as I can with more commentary.